Are you camera shy? Come say hi. What's up guys? <laughs> What's up everyone and welcome back to vlogmas day five today we're doing a video all about mr fenway and the things that i knew nope the things i wish i knew before getting a puppy a dog all of the things with that being said you know that we have the beauty advent calendar and we need to do day five so let's do that mr fen what is it Ooh. It is a Urban Decay All Nighter Face Primer Long Wear Foundation Grip. This is what it looks like. Exciting! Fen, you want it? Why does he put everything in his mouth? Anyway, should that be our first number? Let's get into it. <laughs> no, it's not for you, Goober. I was kidding, that was a test and you failed. But I set you up for failure, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Before we get started, I would like to just throw it out there. I'm not a vet. I'm not a dog professional. I am just a dog owner. Um, this is my second dog. My last dog I rescued when he was a year old from a puppy mill, so he was a little different. Um, and again, we didn't have to go through the puppy stages, so he was brand new to me in terms of dealing with puppy stuff. Uh, so this is just all of my experience. Number one, I would say how much work they are. First off, I do need to preface, he was a lot less work than I imagined, but he did kind of come potty trained, so that wasn't where the work lied. It was mostly in walking him, watching him all the time. They are like children, you just need to watch them all the time. Um, you never know what they're going to get into. And they're just a lot of energy, so multiple walks a day, especially when they're a puppy. And uh, you're not sleeping much the first couple of weeks, I would say the first month, you're not really sleeping, uh, just because their schedule is whenever they need to go. Their little bladders are so tiny then, huh? When you were eight weeks old. All right, number two, how fast they grow. I had never had a puppy before. I had only had a dog. That doesn't make any sense. I had a dog and we got him when he was a year old. So we never had to deal with the the puppy phase or anything like that so I knew nothing going into it um, but he was four pounds when I picked him up and he grew so fast I'm kind of convinced that he's still growing right now and he is a year old but I had no idea that they grew that fast so just make sure to cherish all the time that they're small and cute and just hopping around like little bunnies with so much energy <laughs> Number three is how expensive they are. I did a lot of research and I knew that I wanted to get a wellness plan and a pet insurance plan. I found one that worked within my budget. I highly recommend that everybody does the same. With pet insurance, you just never know what's gonna happen. So it's so much easier, safer, and it's such a weight off of your shoulders to just be prepared in case anything happens. Um, also with wellness, I go through Wagamo for actually both of them and I get reimbursed for certain things that I buy. So I get $200 worth of grooming a year. Um, I get $100 worth of like flea and tick medication. Four vaccines are reimbursed. Um, like a fecal test, I think I get two a year. Um, and then there's a couple other things. But again, make sure that you find the one that's right for you, your situation, and what your pet needs. Also, when I was getting him, I had moved to a new area, so I asked my neighbors where they took their dogs, their animals, and <clears throat> just to find the right vet for him, just to make sure that the reviews that I was seeing online correlated with the actual experience that people have really had, just because I found a lot of times that reviews are not real, they're not, uh, genuine portrayals of how people actually feel especially if there's some type of incentive to make a review for them on Google or something like that so my biggest recommendation would just be to ask around ask your neighbors where they take their dogs for the vet and for the groomer because groomers are getting very expensive these days 
Number four, like you saw in the beginning of this video, they chew everything. When you think your house is puppy proofed, it is not puppy proofed. He's literally biting me right now. Um, he chews everything from socks to shoes to underwear to what else do you chew? You chew up paper, you chew on makeup wipes, you get the point. So make sure that you puppy proof your house, but don't let that be an excuse to not watch your dog and trust that you puppy proofed because when you think you puppy proofed, they're always going to find something. All right, number five is don't overdo it. I did so much research before I got him and I was even looking up daily schedules like to the minute of what I should be doing with him, which was essentially wake up, let them out, go to breakfast, train them for 20 minutes, go do something else, like let them take a nap, go train them again. It was just bang, 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 ridiculous. It didn't work for him. I didn't even try because once you get them, they're gonna tell you what their schedule is. You're gonna figure out what they like and everything like that. And it's just a blend of your schedule and their schedule. So you can't really go based off of anybody else's schedule because they don't know your dog and they don't know you. Another thing that I overdid it on was buying too much stuff for him before I had him and again, knew what he liked. Um, the things that I do recommend buying, I did have a crate. He was never really fond of it, so he's not super crate trained, but he is pen trained. So I found that to be super useful as opposed to the crate. It gave him more room. I always knew where he was and I would put him in that when I would leave the house too. He, liked, he just liked that a lot better than the crate. What else did I buy for you? I bought a couple different leashes and I bought a couple different collars. I would really recommend just buying one of each at first because they're gonna chew them and then you're gonna want to replace them pretty shortly after. So, uh, but again, that was just my experience. So maybe that's not the case, but I really found it helpful to save money in that sense, especially with all the vet bills when he was a puppy, um, to just buy the necessities. I also didn't buy puppy like training pads before I got him and I'm glad that I didn't because he was very quick to learn potty training. There's a FedEx truck outside. <laughs> he was very quick to learn potty training and he didn't need that and I think they're about like $30. So I would just say have the necessities, have a couple different types of toys, have um, squeaky toys, ones with stuffing, no stuffing, um, maybe a tennis ball or a ball of some sort, a Kong toy, a Kong toy is a necessity. Um, but just so that they can sample different types of toys and see what they like. Number six is that it is completely normal and this may sound bad, but it is a genuine feeling. Um, it is absolutely normal to regret getting your dog and do not feel bad about that. You just need to give it some time and get used to it. And I definitely felt a little, I don't know if I would say burdened, but I guess that's the only word I can think of right now. Um, when I first got him, luckily I had my mom to always help me watch him and stuff, but I still felt bad that I was leaving him which led me to kind of regret getting him at first because it felt like he was holding me back from certain things, but I quickly learned that that wasn't the case. It's literally your world. You're going from your world to now your world revolving around something else being your dog. So it's entirely normal to think that you will get used to it. You will, you will not end up regretting them later. It's just a brief little period where you're like, what did I do? I promise you it's fine and it'll go away. Uh, number seven is leave your dog home alone for certain periods of time. He is very clingy. We, he is a pandemic puppy. So, um, come here, please, sir. He is a pandemic puppy. So he, uh, didn't really have a lot of time alone in the house because again, we were always home. So I would really recommend doing that for your dog because he's very clingy now and loves to come with me everywhere. Huh? He's just been very anxious whenever he gets home alone, which makes me feel bad. So I wish that I had started to leave him home alone at a younger age and really did like 20 minutes here, 20 minutes away, 20 minutes here, 20 minutes away, just to get him accustomed to me being away um, to help him in the future. So we're still working on that one right now. <laughs> Number eight is sounds, situations, and stress. Uh, you need to acclimate your dog to any insane noises, anything that you can think of. Motorcycles, trucks, sports cars, 
the only reason I said it is because today he was very scared of a sports car. Um, what else? Ambulances. What else, Fen? What else are you afraid of? All the noises, basically. Uh, horns, stuff like that. You can find all these sounds on like YouTube, on apps and stuff like that. Uh, just start playing them around your dog and reassure them that it's okay or give them treats during that time. Um, I also started bringing him to different types of situations like festivals, concerts. I've started taking him around large crowds so that he can get used to people. Wheelchairs are a big one. A lot of dogs are afraid of wheelchairs. Um, what else? Big cars, everything like that. Just take them everywhere when you know that you're going to be in different situations that your dog should be accustomed to or else they're going to be really stressed whenever they're out with you and in those situations. Number nine, I had no idea that this was a thing. This may be TMI, but you just need to be prepared. This is a, this is a preparation video, so I'm going to be honest with you. Um, Fen, I don't know if it's called something, but he has this thing where his anal glands tend to leak. Uh, when he gets excited or when he really needs to go to the bathroom. My last dog did not have that, so I had no idea what it was. It smells very bad, um, but luckily, whenever he gets groomed, the groomer takes care of it, and I think it's actually in, what was it in, like the Devil Wears Prada or something? She's like, she needs her glands expressed. It's literally a thing, and I thought that was fake. So I would just be prepared for that. They can't help it. It does smell very bad, but you get used to it, and yeah. We love him. And number nine, wait, nope. Number 10 is how much they love you. This dog has very, very, very quickly become my best friend. Even when I first got him, actually I'll put, it's gonna be in one of these corners. I'll put the first video that I made with him um, about getting him. And even when I first got him, I picked him up and he was just crawling up into my neck. And ever since then, he's been a huge cuddle bug. He will just look at me sometimes and it's just, affection you can just see it it's really cute oh he also does this thing that whenever i leave and when i come home he gets very excited his little like wiggle butt just goes everywhere and i'll make him sit down i don't like to get him too excited right when i walk in the door so i make him sit i go across the room and i go okay and he runs and all four legs come off the ground and he launches himself at me and it's our little tradition whenever i'm home whenever i come back home to him and it's very cute and he just loves me so much. There was something else that I wanted to mention and I'm forgetting it. Quickly, that doesn't need much explanation. Dog, dog. Leash walking, definitely work on that. Um, I did take him to a trainer. Uh, you do need to really stay consistent with that. Uh, B, what was it? So I just go from one to B. Anyway, B, um, get them used to the car. A lot of dogs don't like cars. And when they are young, you kind of don't want to take them in the car. You always want to keep them at the house. Don't do that. Take them in the car because essentially if you don't take them with you to random happy places, then they're going to associate the car with going to the vet and that's it or going to the groomer. And what if they hate those things? You know, you want them to have positive associations with the car and be happy to come with you or happy to go anywhere, bring treats, bring them to the pet smart, bring them to all the happy places so that they love the car and that they love coming with you. I believe that is all for this video. I did have an idea that I wanted to do um, of things that I did right and things that I wish I did or didn't do. Let me know if that would be of interest to you because I know that I would definitely do some things different with a second dog. Um, and I just think that'd be really cool to share with you all. So make sure to comment, like, and especially subscribe. We have so many more videos coming your way for Vlogmas. And I really love making videos about Fen. I think he's so much fun. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you all next time. Bye. You want to go look out the window still? Okay, fine. Fine. Your butt is in the video, mister. That's so rude.